this video teaching is going to be on fasting. Now, when I was reading the Bible, I had some verses about fasting. I hope the study, the book that I'm reading from, covers those verses because they were important. I can't remember exactly what they were. Um, anyway, so fasting. And some of this material is from... Well, maybe I won't read the person's name because I don't, I don't know who he is, really. But it's the same book that I've been using. So, it says... Um, probably the first recorded fast is in Judges twenty, twenty six, but I mean, I I don't know why it says that, right? Because the book book of Job, I think was fasting. So let me see something. Let's see, here's the Judges twenty twenty six. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came onto the house of God and wept. And sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. So you see they fasted here and look how they were weeping and uh, they wept. So you see that in the Bible a lot of times fasting with, you know, weeping, people mourning and then they're fasting. And, you know, times of great distress and similar stuff were mourning. Um, food's not going to be tasting that good anyway it just um so there's reasons to fast now i do want to check out if i can see uh, that reference i thought there was one in the book of job let me go back here let's see so job uh let's see Well, look at the book of Job. I thought there was something about him, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me just try one more time. I don't think it would be fasting. Well, okay, so, I mean, look at your own thing. I'm going to move on. Uh, sackcloth. Let me just try one more thing here. I think I'll find it. But anyway you haven't fasted before and sometimes you know the study um, could help so I'm gonna just move on so I guess there was a fast to uh, co commemorate the capture of Jerusalem there's a fast to co commemorate the burning of the temple there's a fast to com com commemorate the murder of Gedalia a fast to commemorate the siege of Jerusalem and I, you know I didn't know some of that and um, during the captivity of Israel added four feasts in addition to one for the day of atonement Zechariah chapter 7 verse 3 through 5 chapter 8 through 19 and it says the book of Nehemiah uh, Nehemiah I mean chapter 7 verse um, 73 verse chapter 9 through 38 records a journal fast and I just thought I'd read those references first and before I get into some of the Bible verses and again with the fasting um, you know let's see I want to see something um, so sometimes um, if you never did a fast um, you know you got to what I'd have to know, you know, what are you doing the fast for? Are you mourning? You know, maybe someone died in your fasting, or maybe, um, you know, you, you know, something happened where you're, you're sorry for something. You fast, or maybe, you know, for the people do it for health reasons, and but people do it, you know, for, do it for God. Okay, so that's a big thing because you know before, I, back I do it for health, but. You know, I wasn't praying as much as I could have been. So on the fast, you, you want to be praying, and it's a good time to be praying more, okay? And reading the Bible more. And the last fast I did when I was reading the Bible and studying the Bible stuff, it really helped. So, you um, you know, if you're studying the scriptures and stuff like that. And I just want to give, you don't have to do extreme fast. You know, sometimes uh, I was reading a book where they say, oh, I, I fasted, like, I don't know what it was, like, 
I, they claim they did like the 40, 40 days in, of fasting or something. You don't have to do that extreme, okay? So even if you know you fasted, if you never fasted, you could try, you know, for one day and, um, or just start off by, you know, slow if you just one meal and just if you maybe there's people that are listening that never went without a, without uh, eating three meals. I don't know, so I can't really um, just give you some general advice, but you know you you can break the fast too. As far as if something happens where you you know need to break the fast, break the fast. Um, again, there's people that have all kinds of health issues and stuff that could um, happen where you know feeling really sick. Or if you feel like you gotta you know you can always take up on a fast later time. But um, you know fasting does help. It gives you a, 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 um, with the Bible study I mentioned how it helps. But you know it, it helps the prayer too. And a lot of times when you do the fast, you feel closer to God. But I'm talking to Christians, okay? Because there's a lot of non-Christians that, you know, maybe the um, that are doing the fasting. It's probably common in the, the false New Age religion, and they, you know, say, well, fasting is good for health. But you know, if those people fast, um, they might end up worse than what they started, okay? Especially, you know, if that person is devil possessed. You know, there's they fast, and then what happens? Uh, you know, if more devils could enter them through that fast. So anyway. Um, so, you know, this study I'm reading, it says strict abstinence from food. So, yeah, so like, a, uh, you know, fast would be without food. But I'm just, I was just saying, like, if you just want to, again, I don't know if uh, some people might be never missed a meal in their life or maybe they're just eating, you know, a lot of food and just, I said, you know, if you just maybe do a, a light thing for one day, just to before you go on to your fast or something but this person has humble confession of sins to god earnest seeking of god um they used you know sackcloth and ashes and they used uh daniel chapter 9 verse 3 and um earnest okay so true intercession but we you know we have as christians intercession we have jesus christ interceding for us um they had giving alms to the poor so i mean when you're fasting too i mean if if people weren't maybe buying the food or spending their money you probably gave the alms or maybe you know food to the poor uh living as one prayed and vowed so there's that too so then you know there's a lot of, of verses um about fasting and they have afflicting the soul you know and uh with fasting so i want to look at psalm 35 verse 13 and again this is just kind of just a really general study i mean you might do one of those key word search uh, searches again um and try that so psalm 35 they have 13 let's see but as for me when they were sick my clothing was sath cloth i humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer returned into mine own bosom so someone humbling their soul with fasting it is humbling um you know especially for people that maybe you know aren't used to um you know maybe they just eat when they want and kind of that but you can it humbles their soul and um you know if you go a couple of days without food you're not going to be you shouldn't be that prideful and again what you want to be doing is then be praying to god and use that for prayer and uh, you know supplications and petitions and um, you know prayers for other people and reading the Bible studying the Bible and about giving the alms to the poor and um, you know the, the sath cloth and ashes were um, you know probably you know to show like a state of humbleness where they you know repenting you know of their sins you know they're repenting um, and they're repenting and through fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So there you see again, I humbled my soul with fasting. So that's important. Um, one more verse, Psalm 69 verse 10. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garment and I became a proverb to them. 
So here, you know, before this, I humbled my soul with fasting. Here, I chastened my soul with fasting. And here's in Job 30, 25. Did I not weep for them that was in trouble? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? Um, so, you know, the study I'm reading, again, they were saying the first fasting was in Judges. But, you know, I think they were, you know, fasting before that. I think there's something in the book of Job about that. But um, you just got to think that people, you know, were fasting before the Judges uh, period. So I just want to make that clear. And so that's those verses. And there's there's more verses here. And, um, you know, type in sometimes a word search can help to show you how much it appears. So I didn't really pay attention. But uh, I want to take these footnotes out. You have 77 verses here. And some of it's just uh, has to do with fast. So I probably should have been uh, fasting too. But, um, and, you know, the example of Second Samuel chapter 12, 23, when David was fasting, he says um, in verse 21, 23, 23, but now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him but he shall not return to me. So there you have the verse where children, um, it's showing David's child died and he's going to go to heaven because David says, I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. So David's saying, I was, you know, was going to see him again, his child. And, you know, when he was alive, David was fasting. But, you know, sometimes um, people mourn and when, you know, even today when they die because... You know, sometimes you don't even you're not sure if that person is going to go to heaven or not and um so i could see people um not that they're you know once you're dead you, you're not gonna uh, that person's either going to heaven or hell so you can't they're not you know purgatory is a false doctrine purgatory doesn't exist so you can't pray someone to heaven so this is you know david was coming from he was fasting um, you know, praying for his child to recover, but then once his child's dead, David stopped the fast, and because he knew the child um, was dead, and David was going to see him, he says, "I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me." David knew he's going to see his child um, one day, and you can't pray someone um, once they're dead. You can't pray them to heaven, okay? And it's only through Jesus Christ and what he did. And um, I do have a gospel message featured on my channel. So, I mean, they proclaim fast for, you know, whole um, areas, you know, the book of um, Jonah where um, they repented. And here in Kings, they proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. So proclaim a fast, fast among the people. You don't see that today where like a whole town or maybe city would proclaim a fast for the whole city and town to get right with god um that would be um you know something i mean i'm not saying it um but just right now and it's not happening okay as far as maybe where you're living and you know maybe it happens in smaller towns but here in the united states i haven't heard too much of a like a whole city like proclaiming a fast but um the thing is it's biblical okay so they proclaimed a fast so then here's just a lot of verses. And Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3. And jo he, uh, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. That's what I'm talking about, fast throughout all Judah. So again, this is a good way um, um, to study the Bible. Now, some of these references, again, are just with the word fast. Um, so we could try to see now how many verses with uh, fasting and fasted. So here's some verses. I'm just going to scroll through them. And you hear different months. This was talking about Zechariah 8, 19. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness, and cheerful feasts, 
Therefore, love the truth and peace. Now, you might see some people proclaiming the Jewish fast and stuff like that. Now, as a Christian, you don't have to keep the Jewish fast. We're under grace. And so, the same thing with, um, you know, some other things. You, you're under grace. If You know, I'm talking about saved Christians. And, um, but, you know, so why would you want to fast? Well, there's the reasons why I gave it. Um, you know, to, you know, chasten your own soul and uh, to humble yourself and to, um, you know, if there's something you want to, you know, you should be praying daily and um, the fast you'd be, you know, praying and uh, to, um, with the prayer. And it, you could see in Daniel, I can give that example here. So, um, but, you know, the Pharisees, were fasting and um so i mean that just gives you just because you're fasting doesn't mean um it doesn't mean you're saved it doesn't mean you it doesn't mean if you're, you're not it doesn't mean that you're even uh pleasing god um you know it depends the reasons you know why you're fasting and you know are you a christian and um so there's people that might be just fasting to try to prove themselves okay that's that's not good okay because look at the pharisees they're you know fasting and they're um, probably so proud of their fasting and you know they're proud of their fasting showing it's like they used it to show off that because they were fasting they kind of wanted to use it as a way to show off to to show people how like what they were doing and that's that's not the reason for fasting and um yeah, why not? I give Luke eighteen twelve here. It's a good time for that one. So Luke eighteen twelve. Let's see. And the Pharisee stood, and I'm going to start at verse eleven. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself: God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. So in verse 12, you had the Pharisee, and he was trying to justify himself by you know, what he was doing, fasting, giving tithes. Um, again, just because someone's fasting, doesn't mean they're saved. Doesn't mean that they're doing it for the right reasons. So going on, I'm going to show you um, fasting. Let's see how many times that. I typed it in earlier, but I didn't check. So 17. And you can see these. I want to get the footnotes off. See the Jews fasting and weeping and wailing. Sathcloth and ashes. My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh faileth of fatness. You even see the the king, you know, in Daniel, pass the night fasting. Let's see what else we have here. Just showing you some of these references. I want to get uh, that verse here, if I can find it. I'm looking for, um, I'll type it if I can't find it. So here's in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontent. Tintnessy. I don't know if I can pronounce that one. And before that, you see, um, I'm going to get to that one. Well, let me get to this one just real quick because I want to just show you the verse um, one. The wife hath not, verse four, the wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Again, the wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. 
and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one, one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. And then see here in Acts chapter 27, verse 33, And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. And see, prayer, prayed with fasting. Acts 14, 23, And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord, on whom they believed. So look at this, had prayed with fasting. And that's an interesting, um, it's, it's true, but had prayed with fasting. You don't hear too many people say, I had prayed with fasting. Well, you know, try it sometime. And, you know, um, there's times where I, you know, maybe just had, like I said, maybe, you know, um, less to eat, like very little bit during the day, a little bit of food. And, you know, that even humbles your um, self. It humbles your soul, just eating a little bit in a day. So, I mean, I just, you know, some people, again, try to say, oh, go to the extremes and I'm not going to, you know, eat for this many days or, um, you know, I mean, if you feel led to do, you know, a couple of days, uh, you know, without food or uh, three days or something, if you feel led to. But I'm just saying, like, even if you go out a day without food, uh, um, that that can, uh, you know, humble a person. But when I was sometimes doing it, even just eating, you know, just a little bit of food, not much, humbles us, you know. So, I mean, if you're doing it for that reason, um, to humble yourself, humble your soul as a Christian and um, fasting too, people used it to, you know, break addictions. So, I mean, you could say like, you know, if someone fasted from something like that they're eating or drinking and then they got off of it. So they basically didn't um, drink that or eat that. But at the same time, then, you know, maybe they w went a while without food or water. So, I mean, if you don't have much experience fasting, just again, pray about it and take it slow. I mean, just try try it out and um you know again maybe just before you get to the fast even try to um you know do a day with just one meal or something like that and you know if you do get sick or something then you have to make a decision you know to break the fast or um you know eat something or drink something i remember one time where i want to keep going but then i decided to drink some juice and that juice really helped me and I, otherwise i was i was really weak and nauseous so um, the whole point is to, you know, you know, pray with fasting, humble yourself, and um, also, you know, God wants the um, alms giving. You know, He's before that too. I mean, so don't use fasting as some kind of thing like self righteous thing, like the Pharisees were doing. Okay, like oh look at I, because it can be like that for people because maybe they went like you know a, a day or two without eating or maybe they do it every week where they don't eat anything and um well if you're you know doing that for god okay but they might be thinking that hey look at me i went you know how many days i fasted this week or how many days i fasted in the year and i went you know this long and look at look at this fast i did and it becomes like a, a self-pride thing and it works um and again a lot some people that are fasting aren't saved and they're and some Christians that are fasting are doing it for the wrong reasons. You know, again, you do it for God. So if you're doing it for yourself, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, when I was first fasting many, well, when I tried it many years ago, I just did it for, you know, health reasons. But, you know, I did it for the wrong reasons because I was doing it just pretty much for myself. And I didn't really fully understand about fasting. And um, if you look at the references to fasting in the Bible, it's a, about um God, you know, you're fasting here, they're weeping and mourning here, they're pr uh, prayer with fasting, and, um, you know, they're humbling themselves, repenting and fasting. Now I want to show a uh, fasted.
So here's fast and you see 15 here. So again, Judges 20, 26 is the first reference of fasted. So I mean, again, do, um, so that's when it first appeared. In, so I mean, it'll just say that Judges is the first. I mean, where I was going earlier that, you know, I think maybe, you know, people were, um, you know, fasting before this, but we'll just say that Judges 20, 26 is the first reference if I type in fast. So then that's just how I got to teach it. And, um, So yeah, if I type in fasting, let's see the first reference. But I mean, again, at the same time, were people fasting before that? Well, you know, I wonder. But the first reference is in Judges twenty twenty six, which is kind of surprising because, I, like I said, I thought it was, I thought there was a reference in Job, but I, um, but I think in Job where I was going before that. can see here I have sued sackcloth upon my skin and defiled my horn in the dust so we know he was um, you know had sackcloth upon his skin and you saw the references before with uh, sackcloth and uh, fasting I want to just do one more thing here in the book of Job just one more verse here. And again, these footnotes aren't very helpful usually, but then when you take them off, it goes up here. So, I mean, I don't have too many more verses here. I think someone's here. So, um, let's see. Again, I, I had it. Now i got to go all the way back. But, you know, if you have, you know, you pray about it, do your own Bible study. You know, we're supposed to be studying the Bible as a Christian and, um, and the verse I wanted to get to is Job 20, uh, chapter 2, verse 13 here. Um, so they sat down with him and they talked, you know, they sat down with Job. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights and none spake a word unto him for they saw that his grief was very great. And the reason why I'm, uh, pointing this out because the reference with Sath cloth before that. Um, and here's some references. I'll check these Bible references. And, you know, lamentation too. The Bible uses that, that word very sore. Lamentation. And made a mourning for his father seven days. So here's some other references in Genesis 50.10. And they came to the thresh, threshing floor of Atad, if I'm pronouncing that right, I don't know, which is beyond Jordan. And there they mourned with great and very sore lamentation and made a mourning for his father seven days. So they buried, uh, Joseph went to bury his father, Isaac. And you see that they made a mourning for his father seven days. Now in Ezekiel 3, chapter 15, Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Abib, if I'm pronouncing that right, and dwelt by the river of Shebar, if I'm pronouncing that right, and I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. So there's a cross-reference there too. So um, just maybe one more thing here, but Again, if you have any questions, uh, you know, you can do your own Bible study. And um, I can say fasting does work. But again, you got to do it for God and you do it for the right reasons. Okay, so you don't want to use it for something selfish or something, you know, to being bragging about or something like that. You don't want to be doing it for that reason. You're, you you want to do it for God. And, um, you know, fasting doesn't get taught too much. And... Um, so then here in Daniel, again, Daniel, and I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sath cloth and ashes. So there you go. Um, some other verses here. But I think you guys get the idea and um, let's see if I have to cover anything else. 
Oh, the book does have um, a wrong kind of fasting. So the book I'm reading from would be, okay, the wrong reasons to fast, to make a display for God, uh, merely aff afflicting their souls. Um, let's see what verses is. So they got Isaiah 58. So let, let's check Isaiah 58 pretty quick. So Isaiah 58. This might be the last one. So Isaiah uh, 58, and we're going to verses 3 through 5. Wherefore have we fasted, say thee, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Again, I don't want the footnote. So first, verse 4. Um, I'm going to have to read it one more time because it got, okay. Wherefore have we, fa let me see what the verse is before. Uh, let's see. Okay, so verse one, I might as well. Cry, cry out loud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of ordinances of justice that take delight in in approaching to God. So one more time, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice that take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, thou that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall bring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be re reward. Re reward, if I'm pronouncing that. that. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hunger, hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. Then shall thy light arise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they sh and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste place places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the, the holy of the Lord, honorable and shalt honor him not doing thine own ways not, nor finding thine own pleasure 
nor speak in thy own wor own words. Then sh shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So they were doing it, you know, um, you know, merely to just afflict their souls. They were um, just doing it like for they had lost its meaning. Okay, you could see a strife and debate, um, smite the wicked fist uh, to make their voices heard, and to bow. So you have as a display for God to see, kind of look at me, and then you have. So these are the wrong, you know, they're doing it for the wrong reasons. Merely afflict, afflicting their souls. So they're just kind of doing it as like a self-punishment, okay? Like, okay, so these are the wrong reasons. Uh, for a display, just to afflict themselves. For a personal gain, uh, personal pleasure, um, they get pleasure out of it. To extract full labor. Um, it says in this, um, my study here, press employees to get full daily output of goods. It says, look at verse 3. To extract, you know, full labor of their, um, maybe their hired servants or their workers. For strife or debate. So again, wrong reasons. To smite the wicked fist. That's in verse 4. To make God hear their voices. So kind of like, hey, you got to hear me, God, because I'm fasting, okay? Kind of like, th that'd be wrong, okay? So you got to be humble. To bow the head as a bulrush. I might have to kind of study that. Um, to sit at, in sackcloth and ashes. To like kind of like show off maybe, so the, you know the right reasons to fast, to loose the bands of wickedness. That'd be verse six. To undo the heavy burdens. Verse six. To let the oppressed go free. Verse six. To break every yoke. Verse six. To give bread to the hungry. Verse seven. To restore the poor from thy house. Verse seven. To clothe the naked. Verse seven. To reveal yourself to your relatives. It says verse seven. And it says these words can be summarized in James 1 to 127. So again, the right reasons to fast, to loose, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke, to give bread to the hungry, to restore the poor from thy house, to clothe the naked, to reveal yourself to your relatives. And I said too, you know, with praying to you, um, fast, I mean, you can still do it to, you know, humble yourself but um you know if you're just doing it again if you're just doing it as a display to show off or maybe some people want to like you know there's people that you know this is wrong okay where they like inflict pain on themselves like they you know maybe you know make themselves like they people inflict pain on purpose as a self-punishment okay like uh, you have people like that you know do that and that's wrong so i mean so they're just like afflicting their souls for the wrong reason and or personal pleasure they got out of it fasting and okay that's or strife or debate these are wrong reasons wrong reasons to fast to smite with the wicked fist and i'd have to kind of look up that one as far as study it but i mean it's all here and you know this is this is the really important where they just you know thought they could fast and god had to hear them but you know he gives the verses here about you know this is this is where you want to go to for the verses about fasting you know it's a lot of information here and um he does have uh james one two seven so james one two seven twenty seven Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and keep himself unspotted from the world. So, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. This, admitting a fault of mine, I haven't uh, visited the fatherless or widows. and um, in their. But, I mean, the thing is, if you do know um, someone like that, you can, you know, visit them and, there's just a f but here's the verse that kind of sums up the other things I was talking about again so again James 127 pure religion and undefiled before God and the father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction 
and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So the second part too is separation. Um, you know, separating if you have people you know that aren't Christians that are going to cause that's going to cause you trouble and if you if you give them the gospel message and they uh, you tried a couple times twice to give them the gospel message and your friends um you know separation is key so this is the second part keep um and separate from other things of the world um that includes you know uh violent video games violent movies stuff like that and you know music that you shouldn't be listening to worldly music there's a lot of stuff here that that covers but there's james 127 again is a reference to the verses we just read in um before that so um again on your own time study isaiah 58 chapter 58 and you know read it on your own time that's really important and pray to god about it and about fasting and um do your bible study and pray to god and um, so this has been the study on fasting so um all glory goes to god thank you um thanks god